Yeah, welcome back to the Sportsman Zone. Track and field is where we begin. The World Under 20 Athletics Championship began earlier on Tuesday in Lima, Peru. But four athletes from Antigua and Barbuda who earned the right to represent their country have been forced to watch from home after their athletic association failed to register them. The affected athletes are 2022 Carifta Games Under-17 100 champion Dwayne Fleming, the 2024 Carifta Games Under-20 girls 100 meter bronze medalist Jolina Dowdy, three-time Under-20 100 finalist Ajani Daly, and the 2023 NACAC Under-18 sprint double champion Kasaya Daly. The man at the helm of the Antigua and Barbuda Athletic Association, ABAA, Everton Cornelius, held a meeting with his executive members on Wednesday, that's last week, to discuss circumstances that led to the association missing two registration deadlines set by World Athletics. Mr. Cornelius joins us now via phone. Um, Everton Cornelius, welcome to the Sportsmag Zone. Let's get right to it. What came out of that executive meeting that you had last week? Well, basically, we did have an overview of the situation, looking at exactly what went wrong. Um, what I found out from, from the meeting, and my understanding not only transpired within the meeting, but outside of the meeting before we actually got to the meeting, is the fact that no one was paying true care and attention um, to the information that was put on the portal that they should have opened on time and made the necessary registration. That being the case, they had come to see me to let me know what problem they were having. I asked them to write to World Athletics and explain to them what was going on. They gave them some deadline dates, and no one still followed up on the um, information that was sent by World Athletics. That's what brought us to this position that we, that, that we find ourselves in uh, oh, just a few weeks ago. That, that basically is in a, in a nutshell. So, Mr. Cornelius, they basically dropped the ball. Given what you have just said to me and the admission that your administration dropped the ball, there are athletes who have been denied the opportunity to compete on the global stage. The event happening as we speak, the women's 100 semifinals are taking place now. Gialina Dowdy quite likely would be participating right now if not for this um, significant misstep from your association. What now? Well, we just have to we just have to determine our way forward with all this. How we're going to deal with the matter in the future. Number one and number two, we basically have to look at everyone who was involved and should have really follow up on the actual registration to make sure. Like, you have to look at the coach, the manager of the team. Everybody should be working in tandem to make sure that if if there is a problem, at least somebody would have come to me early enough that I could have fixed it. If it's something that I have that, that, that I had to fix or need to fix at the point in time, because most likely one once we have a problem. I'm the one step forward and make sure that the, 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 the situation is resolved as quickly as possible. Um, the, the, I, 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 I guess that heads are going to roll, whatever it may be, but it's a decision for the executive to decide at, 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 the, at our next meeting. You know, Mr. Cornelius, you went to the Olympic Games in 1976 representing Antigua and Barbuda in the men's 4x100. Um, take yourself back to that time. If this had happened to you, when you were competing and your National Olympic Committee failed to register your team for the Olympic Games, how would you react? What would you be calling at, for? At, at that point, at that point in time, I've experienced worse than that in my in my days of running. I've been to the airport and didn't have a ticket to get on the plane because we couldn't probably raise the money to go back in nineteen seventy six when I was um, an, an athlete. But I've um, Looking at the situation, I won't go back to my idea. Looking at the situation, I would not be pleased as an athlete. I think that we definitely owe these athletes an apology and it's fair and deep apology. Um, we definitely have to take a really in depth look at the organization. I, I know some of the challenges that we have that we need to probably we need to put some things in place to make sure that these things don't happen again. We do not have an active secretariat, is one thing. So we don't have someone in the office sitting down um, going through the, the portal to make sure all the information is being. Um, passed on to us on a daily basis. And it's things that I think we need to put in place to make sure that uh, these things don't happen again. But uh, at this point in time, I, I, can't even, I, can't even find, I can't even find the words to really express basically um, the overall feeling, my disappointment in the whole thing. Uh, I just think that people just wait until the last moment, they just wait until the last moment when everything just went crazy to start talking about it. You there know, so many correspondents that, was, that, 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 that people said this came, that came at this date, and this day, and this day. I said, but you, you all can find all these things. Now, what happened when 
that this is the only when this one in the forty came out when somebody called me in the forty and told me this was the problem. It's why not, I, could, I could not understand. Yeah, Mr. Cornelius, let me tell you what I can't understand I'm just listening to you at this stage. I get the feeling that you have almost removed yourself from what happened. And I have a big issue with that because you are the president of the association. It is your responsibility, or at least part of your responsibility, to ensure there is a system in place that allows for matters of this magnitude to be appropriately handled. And if they are not appropriately handled, um, for want of a better term, the book stops with you. And so I am having a serious difficulty understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I really do get the feeling that you are, in a way, trying to separate yourself, um, remove yourself from what has happened, and placing the blame squarely and only on the part of executive members or other executive members. No, not, not, I would not say I'm, I'm, I'm withdrawing myself when I speak. I speak inclusive of all of us um, when it comes to the, when it comes to what what happened, because I think all of us should be paying more joking attention as to what is going on. It's, I want to say we do not have a. It's not a. It's not a. It's not most of the executive. Well, all of the executive members are high are high level people and they work. And I, I, I can see at times we may probably, and it's something we have discussed so many times, that we need to have an active secretariat. We need to have someone working in the office. But we are not, we are not a country that we have money that we can pay someone, and if the government provides us with that kind of service, we'll be quite happy um, for that to happen. We've made requests with before it never happened. So and these, these are some of the challenges that we have to face. And when things happen, I'm not, I'm not divorcing myself from it. I can tell you that, no, I'm not divorcing myself from it. I know everybody's going to say, uh, or whatever goes down, is rest the feet of the president to make sure everything goes accordingly. I have been in the sports for over, I would say, for over 40 years. You go back to 1976, so you can work, you can hold that out um, to this day. And I'm still in the sports to this day. I think that I've done human service where that is concerned. So it's not something that I would take lightly because I'm not just come to the sports. I've been in it just about all my life um, until this present day. So it's not something that I would take lightly or even felt that uh, it is something that can be just overlooked and just pushed and just, and just Rush to the side and call it that. It's, we have to really dig deep and really, really, really examine ourselves and at least find a way to make amends with these athletes. Yeah, let me ask you bluntly, Mr. Cornelius, given the magnitude of this fall up, do you think it is significant enough for the person at the helm to step away, to resign because of the magnitude of this fall up? Well, if you, if you, I, I guess you have to make a total review of the whole situation, not just the situation, but you have to look at where we are. You have to look at where we are and exactly where we're going and make that determination. It, it's not for me. It's not for me. It's not for me to determine um, that situation. Um, that make that decision. I think it's best for the executive to sit and make that decision if it becomes necessary. So, in other it, words, it, it, it's not, it, in it, other it, words, it's not Lance, what I'm saying, it is not just to say move someone from the helm, but you have to look effectively at, at, at your organization and determine when you move someone, how do you replace them? That's yeah. basically what it is. So yeah. I'm saying it's a, it's a question that the executive and the members will have to sit and examine and make that determination. If the determination to move me to move me from the helm, I'm honestly to land, I do not have a problem. Yeah, M Mr. President, let's be honest though, you should know what is happening in your association and therefore if you have a handle on everything that's happening based on all the information that you have, given the significance of this follow-up, are you willing to step away? We're not talking about the executive members now and what they think. Why, why, We're talking why, about why what your, you think. Why in your estimation should I step away? R Ricardo, by the way, correction, Ricardo, not Lance. Oh, I, oh, I don't, oh, oh, I don't oh, want oh, you to Ricardo. get the names sorry, mixed sorry, up. Sorry, yes. sorry, sorry. I thought the person said Lance was responsible. No, I'm just saying in your estimation that that's your personal feeling. I have no, I, I can't have a discussion with that. That's your feeling. That's how you see things. I don't see it that way, but it's, it, it, we don't need, we don't, we can disagree to disagree and move on. So, so let me get that straight. You don't think that this fall up is significant enough for you to step away? No, I, I, I don't think so. It's something that we have to look at deeply as an organization. Really, really, really do deeply at it. We have to look at our organization and the future of our organization. We, everybody has problems in the organization from time to time. And we have to determine how we solve our problems, how we move on and move from, move from weakness to strength. 
That's what we have to do. But Everton, are you okay with you know continuing leading an organisation, knowing that there has been a lot of uh, a loss of trust um, among those around you, based on as Ricardo outlined the magnitude of this slip up? I'm still telling you that is not that is. I don't think I should just step away. That must be a decision of the organisation if I should step away or if I should step aside or if I should just give it up. Whatever it is. It is a, it's a decision of the organization to do that. Okay, so I get what you're saying. You're not willing to, of course, make that decision. You're waiting on the executive to decide the as to how... Must to... Make that, they must make that decision. All right, I so... Can, I can, I already, I, I basically, in my mind, I can, I can see a lot of different things, but no, the executive will make that decision. All right. Move forward. Okay, so while we await the executive to make that decision, a key thing is how do we put things in place to avoid this from ever happening again? Have you started I said, discussions? I, I just said that, okay. What I said, what I said, what I said, what I said before, I don't know if you heard me, what I said before, we need to have an active secretary, an active secretary, so that's someone the... working in the office to deal with all the information coming in. We cannot, we cannot go back at this day and age depending on people who are working eight hours a day to, to really to peruse everything that we have and everything that is going on. We must have an active secretariat where someone is working within the, the organization. That, that's their full-time job, looking at these things. All right. So your only way of solving this is to have an active secretariat moving forward? Yes, I think, yes. We can, and once we have that, I don't think we'll ever have a problem like this again. We, we managed to get by over the we managed to get by over the years without an active secretary, and sometimes we are playing it very close to our chest uh, at, at times. Uh, we have discussed this step on several occasions. This is what is needed, and I'm saying we do not have the money that we can employ someone to work in you know, to work in, at, at the office that we have in the building that we have there. But at the same time, I think it needs it. This happening, I think it hope it fall in the ears that it needs so that they will say, listen, let us know what you need so this don't happen again and give us the necessary tools that we can at least move forward. Yeah, Mr. President, when, when, efficiently. Yeah, Mr. President, when did you know that the World Under-20 Championships would be taking place? I know from the onset. Mm. And, and, and we're, yeah, ta I know, we're, we're, I know we're talking I about at least and, and, two and years ago. I knew that. Yes. Did you do uh -huh. any checks during between the period of your national championships and the deadline dates for um, the, 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 the registration of the athletes? Yes, I, yes, I did. And when you did the those last, checks, last, what did you last find? Meeting, the last meeting I had, we put, the, we, took, we put together the team and, and the people who should deal with the registration. Basically, we did that. And, the, and, and that's it. The coach, I had the coach, the coach manager, who's an executive member. I put it out, out our technical person. Who deals with who deals who deals with the registration most of the time? He's not the only one. I think it's so two of them deal with the registration. I am the backup person just in case if there's a problem, you will let me know there's a problem so I can at least use my office to get to start with whatever if there's a problem. And that's what we have been doing over the years. And you are saying that the deadline passed and none of these individuals reported to you that there was an issue. No, until until un, until when I was brought into the picture when somebody said to me that they received correspondence saying that we have well no I shouldn't say that that's when I received it. When they brought it to me I asked them to work to write to two individuals in the World Athletics Department. Which was um Salini and Salini and 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 and, and, Harry, and, uh, and they copied me the letters and the letters were sent off the same day. And the letters came to me, I I talked to, I kept on calling to find out if there was any uh, response. Is there any response? No, no, no. Eventually, when I when I got a yes, the yes was that yes, I got a response. But um, they said that we have made the selection, um, we made the submission late, and it appears and it appears to us, it appears to them that we did not have any interest in participating in the meet. Yeah, Mr. Cornelius, I'm at a loss here as to what you are suggesting on the show because I'm not suggesting anything. You ask me a question, I'm just answering. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm going to ask you a question now because the feeling that we're getting from the Antigua sporting public is that they no longer have, have confidence in, in your leadership of the, of the track and field. And if that is so, I'm not sure if you think that a review of the processes uh, that you're having with your association would, would, would 
ameliorate the situation or make the fans in Antigua and Barbuda any more confident about your future leadership? That's what to decide, sir. Yeah, but you know, I, I can see this happening in many other jurisdictions and someone in your position would just simply step aside because it is, it is grossly embarrassing and you have lost the trust of the sporting public in Antigua and Barbuda. And for you to suggest that the executive would have to decide what the next step is, is a little appalling for us because you have just suggested that the executive messed the whole thing up. So, in our if, opinion, if, in our opinion, your executive is incompetent. So, why would they be the ones that would sit down now and decide what happens next, sir? What, I say, what, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm what I'm saying to you is not it's not it's not it's not as simple as you're putting it to walk away to walk away from it and just but say I, I resign. I, I there are things there are things that have, that have to be and ought to be looked at effectively and make sure, if I step aside, that there can be smooth, a smooth transition and proper and the association continue to go from strength to strength. I'm not a person just to turn my back and walk away in court and say, well, already I made a mistake, so I'm out of here because that's what you... I well, have to look at the organization, well, look at the organization constructively and then make my decision. If I think I need to step aside, if I have to step aside, that's not a problem. It's well, not a problem. Well, I'm not even debating that. Yeah, that is not a problem. Yeah, well, you just said two things just now that I find shocking. You said um, to... to, to, to to a smooth something about a smooth transition and, and the association going from strength to strength. Well, first of all, there's nothing smooth about what has been happening. And to say strength to strength is suggesting that you're moving from a position of, uh, of uh, strength and trying to strengthen. And they're, they're, but, in, but in if those... One, if, one, if one situation, if, if you're saying um, one hiccup in a situation means that, means that everything, nothing, else, nothing makes sense over the years, and this one thing proved that nothing makes sense, then uh, well, it's, a, it's, well, an opinion, it's an opinion. Well, Ry, Ry Benjamin, the 400-meter hurdles champion for the USA, who previously represented uh, Antigua and Barbuda, said in one of your local newspapers recently that mm -hmm. from, from 10 years ago, um, uh -huh. there, there were deficiencies in, in, in your leadership. And, and those were some of the reasons why he decided to switch allegiance to the United States from Antigua and Barbuda. So to suggest that this well, is, this it, is it, one it, hiccup it, is a little misleading because from what no, we that, gather, that, from what we gather, the track and field no, you're fraternity... You're talking, you need to stop listening. You, you're saying from what you gather, you're, you're speaking from what you hear. You, when somebody says something, you need to get to the next source to find exactly what transpired. Well, there was no rebuttal coming yes, from your yes. office about Rye office, Benjamin's, yes. Rye Benjamin's yes. statements. No, they spoke about me. Not, 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 not the office, they spoke about me. Was, there a, me. was there a rebuttal from you on what he said? About, about, about what? You only can rebut to something if what the person is saying is true. I don't know. If he, what he's saying doesn't make any sense to me. It makes oh, sense so to him. And he may have his reason why he's saying that, okay. to find a door to exit. But I know it's not true. He knows it's not true either. He knows it's not true also. So, yeah. what is he to respond to? Well, he did suggest that he was... He... Well, he can suggest... He, listen, the thing about it, anybody can suggest anything to make themselves look good. I don't do things like that. I don't have no oh. reason at all to lie oh, so. when it comes to sports. So Not that, whatsoever. So, right, Benjamin was just trying to make himself look good. That's it. I can tell you that point blank. Not me. I, he can, whatever, he said, whatever he said that I heard, somebody said that he said something. Yeah, well, I don't well, even well, get well, attention well, to it. Well, well, he did suggest that on his travels overseas representing Antigua and Barbuda, he was, he was left all alone. And he didn't feel as if uh, there was any administration guiding him well, as, a, as, a, as a teenager. He would, have to tell me, he would have to tell me where, when, and how that was done. Yeah, well, I went to you. I went to you. I'll, let, I'll tell you something. Let me let you know the story. I went to you for a good ride. And let me tell you something about me. I don't go to watch track meet when I go as a official. I go to take care of my athletes. That's all I deal with. Nothing else and no more. Once my athletes are already competed, I'm telling you, that's when I may sit and watch something. I give my athletes all my attention when I was acting as a coach or an official has to deal with a team. That's yeah. how I behave. That's how I behave to this day. Yeah. And that's, so I have no qualm. If somebody, when he says something like that, I, I maybe want an exit strategy to make himself look good. That's all I can 
Uh, well, since since you're saying that, I would I would put to you that uh, Coach Daly came on the Sports Mat Zone last week, and his athletes were the ones that were hurt by this foul up by the Antigua Barbados. I I I, I cannot I'm, dodge all. I'm asking a question though. Can Oscar, you? Oscar, well, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm just go suggesting ahead. to you that he, yeah. he he pointed out that the quality of leadership or administration in Antigua and Barbuda's track and field at the moment was poor. So, so he, he, he's, suggesting, he's suggesting that um, your leadership has not been good. And this isn't just one follow-up. That's what he said on the show. That's his opinion. He's part of the executive. He should know. Well, it's very... For, for, for he's, he's obvious, part of the Mr. Cornelius... If he's, part of the if he's part of the executive, and he's saying, and he's saying that um, it has more than one follow-up, he can point them out to me. Because if there's a problem, I solve it. If there is a problem at any time... I'm the one who steps up and solves it. Do you think it I give it to some I give somebody something to deal with and they probably want to follow it, did not act in time, and then the, the stuff is brought to me and I I solve the problem. I get the problem solved. Do That's you my job. Uh, do you think you have the approach where people feel as if they can approach you when um, something is going <laughs> wrong? Do you have that open door policy in your administration? Yes, I do. If it's only 24 hours, you call me, I, I, you, I, don't, I, don't, I don't shy away or push people away. I don't. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cornelius, I can defend, I can defend whatever, whatever, goes, whatever goes down, right, and what people are saying. Everybody's trying to cover their traps. I have no traps to cover. Mm -hmm. I will tell you just like it isn't just what it is. That's just who I am. Yeah. Mr. So I'm saying, I'm saying we, can, we can differ in opinions and feelings. I have no problem with that. I'm not going to have an argument over it. Everybody sees things differently. But what I'm saying to you, whatever I say to you, I, I'm telling you, I'm speaking straight up, the truth. I don't have no orders to turn. Yeah, Mr. I don't Cor look back when I talk because I know I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. That's what it is. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Cornelius, what's the relationship like between yourself and your executive members? It's very good. It's very have no good. Problem, have, no, have no problem. And they have no, no problems with you? Well, they've never, they've, never, they've never pointed that out to me. If there's something for us to talk about, I, I can make a decision or say something that someone is not in agreement with. They will speak openly to it. If there's an apology, there's an apology. If there's no need for it, we have our discussion and we come to a conclusion and we move on. Yeah, M Mr. Cornelius, you know, listening mm -hmm. to you here today, I feel as if, whether rightly or wrongly, you've just thrown your entire executive under the bus, but then you say that's you have a, your, a opinion, wonderful relationship. Opinion, you no, you're talking news. You're talking news. I'm talking the truth. I don't know. You're talking news. Throwing people under the bus. I never call it a, a, a person name. I said our executive, which includes me. So if I'm trying the entire executive, it means all of us as politics because all of us run in an organization. If that's what you're saying, mm. we are always responsible to the organization. Yes, I'm at the helm and everything will rest at my at my at my feet, and I will have to face the music. But I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. Those are your words, not mine. Mm. So the relationship between yourself and your executives is great. Everything is honky dory at the Antigua and Barbuda Athletics Association. Before this incident, I'm going to tell you yes. At now, I know everybody's looking. I know everybody's looking for a way out, and people are talking. And this is just natural. This is just nat It is just natural. Nothing unnatural about that. But don't speak like that. We have a, a warring relationship over the years. No, we have very, we have a very good working relationship with the executive is concerned. Mm -hmm. I'm saying there are, there are challenges. There are challenges that we have to face. There are things that are put in place. Uh, so if we can do it ourselves, we need assistance to have that done. But it's, it's just a, it's work in progress. Yeah. In, That's what it is. In 20 seconds, Mr. Cornelius, would you be surprised if you are challenged at the next voting AGM? Well, I'm, well listen, I'll say as much as this to you. I already indicated since maybe four years ago that this was my last term running as the president of the association. Just in case if you want to know that, because I see that's where you're heading, but no. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I, would not, I, I don't mind. I would still be a part of athletics, mm -hmm. but I would not be at the helm. And, and that, was indicated, that was indicated four years ago. Yeah, and one more thing before you go. The sports minister, Daryl Matthew, told the media in Antigua and Barbuda in the last couple of days that he will meet with your association to address this catastrophic issue. Has he met with you yet? That's just, that's your words. Those, those, those cut the strap, it does everywhere. But anyway, no. Oh, he, quick he has not. No. Oh, well, right. you're waiting for his call then. Whenever.
Mm. Okay. All available. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Mr. Cornelius, thank you very much for joining us on the Sportsbank Zone. Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome. Anytime and every time. Yeah. Everton Cornelius, president of the Antigua and Barbuda Athletic Association. But this, this is an appalling story, Mariah and, and Ricardo. I, I have known situations like these to happen in any sphere, mm -hmm. not just in sport, but something as calamitous as this happens, and the head just, just resigns. It's just the right thing to do because there's no repairing this and the public has lost confidence in you. The right thing to do is to resign. Well, Everton is bent on keeping the office until the ex executive decides. That's, that's inexcusable. His position is inexcusable. Yeah, I find it that way as well. And you know the unfortunate thing for me, and this is going beyond now the Antigua and Barbuda Athletic Association. Um, I wish there was a way on the part of World Athletics um, to have had the athletes compete and then deal with the association as a separate entity. Yeah. Because in all of this, it is the athletes who have suffered uh, more than anyone else. You, you hear Mr. Cornelius, yeah, we'll apologize to the athletes. Um, we'll have to look at what's happening in the organization as if to suggest that as the head, he doesn't know what is happening um, within the organization. And you hear all of those things, but at the end of the day, you have four athletes who have worked so hard in 2024 to qualify for the World Under-20 Championships, which incidentally is taking place right now, and they're probably sitting at home in Antigua and Barbuda, either watching this interview or watching the World Under-20s, or both, when they should be competing, either Gialina Dowdy in the girls' 100 semifinals, or the dailies, Kasaya and Dejani in the boys' 100-meter semifinals. They are the ones who are suffering while you have administrators who did not do their jobs. Well, pretty much just trying to pass the blame. That's how I see it. And one of the things I didn't like at all is you asked the question about this moving forward and everything. And I felt like the answer about getting a secretary was just not enough. And I asked it again, hoping that Ricardo, the second time I asked it, I would get a different answer. And I got the same thing, as in this secretary will yeah. solve all the issues. And it, to me, that's not good enough. Yeah, it's not good enough. And if you don't have a secretary, you're the president. You get up and you get the job done yourself. It's four athletes. It's not a team of 40 or 50 or 60. It's four athletes. How difficult can it be to enter four athletes? If your secretary general is not doing it, you get up and you do it. And if you've not done it, there is no excuse. You step away and you allow somebody else who clearly knows how to enter athletes to take up the job. Let's take a break. We'll be back with more on the Sports Mag Zone. <laughs>